Dillo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, don't forget, if you do want to go live with us next time, or you miss a live and you want to catch up on it, you can go to twitch.com and enter this right here. You see it? It just popped up. Enter that first one. Follow. You don't got to follow anyway, but you can if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then lock in with us. You get me? Don't forget, we do got Patreon and we do got merch as well, man. We post Patreon five days a week. Thank you for everybody who's on Patreon. I appreciate you locking in, tuning in with me every day to watch great British content. You yeah, know? This is Channel 4 News. I live off 30 pounds a month. Nearly 4, people, 4 million people in the UK experienced destitution last year. $30 is crazy, bro. Like, what? That's not even a full tank of gas. Barely. Toyota Corolla. You get me? Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Let's get into it. <laughs> I've been a bus driver. I've uh, driven lorries. Paul is 57 and lives in Western Supermare. This morning, he went to the local food bank in desperation. Today, we picked up these cans. So you've got what? Baked beans. Baked beans. Soup. soup tomato soup. Uh, chopped tomatoes are back there as well. He's had no money for days, and what little food he's had, he's had to ration to one meal a day. Damn. Have you been hungry? I Paul, starving. I've been really hungry the last three days. So what did you eat yesterday? Uh, I had fish fingers and beans. What, what else did you have? Struggle meal. He's eating real struggle meals out here. Fish fingers and beans is crazy. You got bread? Make a fish sandwich. Fish sarny, whatever. That's, That's all I had was fish fingers and beans for me. Evening meal. What about lunch? No, no. I just fill up on tea. He lives alone, and in this, the flat's only other room keeps the lights off as much as possible. Vehicle repair diplomas adorn mostly bare walls from a career ended prematurely by ill health. I, I think I just get scared of going out and seeing other people living their life. Well, my life, I'll be eating so many free samples wherever I need to go. Costco, Asda, wherever. I'll be the free sample king. I'm not trying to poke fun of it, but I got to do what I got to do. You know, I kind of walk past a pub and everybody's sat outside at lunchtime having a drink. I don't drink, but it's the fact that how can you afford that? That was for September. Paul receives £843 a month on universal credit. So that's not $30. That's 843 He's due to get more on health grounds, but right now he's reeling from a recent hike in rent. Now ah, yeah, rent. I forgot. Eight forty-three to pay everything, costing six hundred and twenty pounds a month, <laughs> leaving him after paying bills and insurance with, on average, thirty pounds for the month to eat. So you got thirty dollars to eat, but the main priorities are taken care of that's crazy that's for food washing because i have to use a laundrette to do me washing not every day though <laughs> and so, that's expensive no so 30 pounds yeah i have started washing in the sink the amount you've got in your bank account currently 11 pence and that's it Today's report by the Joseph Rantree Foundation estimates the number of people experiencing destitution in the U oh UK has more than doubled in the last five years. Such severe hardship, they say, is no longer a rare occurrence. Do you want yeah. some extra milk, love? Oh, yes, please, yes. Got loads of milk. 
Gareth, who's 55, finds himself at the same food bank as Paul. A welder fa was that a plum? fabricator until he says a spinal issue affecting his hands made that too difficult. I need a new pair of boots, yeah? I'll struggle to buy a, a, a postcard with a pair of boots on it. If you know so is he not on disability then? I mean, it's like, I, I can't afford anything, you know? Sometimes I have to... Sometimes I have to share a can of tuna with a cat because we're that skin. You get to a stage where you just think, what's the point? You know, this is not living, this is not even surviving. Everything I held dear in the last year since I've been signed off has gone, really. His application for disability benefits, he says, is proving long and arduous. A common theme, says today's report. Do you like salami? Another, as this food bank tells us, is that many simply can't afford essential items with the universal credit income they get. Sometimes we actually count it, and uh, in a session where we did 32 parcels, 30 people asked for toilet paper. Some people, it's the first thing that, when you say, you know, just ask them for their voucher number and their name, and the first thing they say is, I need toilet paper. More than You really don't know how important toilet paper is until you, until you, you know what I'm saying? Until you don't have it. Until all your shirts are in the washing machine until you wipe your butt with a sock. Like, you don't really, you know what I'm saying? That's in that I've ever done that. But like, it's, an, it's a vital part of the day to day. Than anything else. And it's just, yeah. It is, says today's report, a social security system now so full of holes that it falls to charities to intervene, but adds the task is too great for them. It's finding of a sharp rise in destitute migrant households chimes with what Bristol's Borderlands charity has seen. There's barely a spare seat at this, their weekly lunch for refugees and asylum seekers. Seven. While the numbers queuing for a handout of fruit and veg grow ever larger. Thank you very much. Okay. Are people asking you for more food, more than you can give them? Absolutely. Uh, I think with the food we give every week, we kind of cover a week uh, for a family. And every week there is people asking for different uh, items we just can't provide. Is there all? Yeah, that's bold though. I mean, I mean, like, I, like, it's an unfortunate situation, but like beggars can't be choosy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm thankful for anything that you can provide for me. And I, it's, a, I said that term for lack of better term. That's, you can't be out here trying to, ask for specific stuff always a big queue like this yes yes absolutely like it's growing every week warnings grow around the impact destitution can have particularly on children with as many as a million in the uk affected last year so claims today's report back in western supermare we meet jasmine a single parent to henry good boy She's in paid work, a part-time cleaner and receptionist training to be a counsellor. She receives universal credit, but has debt, has needed the food bank, and has skipped meals, she says, so Henry has enough. Toast. She is only just managing to avoid what the Joseph Rowntree Foundation would define as destitution. A cheese? Cheese, yeah. I now know these next few months are going to be really hard because at the moment I can only just afford my gas and electric. I know my gas is now about to triple. I think last, ye last winter, I think, so January time, it was minus two, it was freezing, like I had him wrapped in everything, and my gas cut off. Um, I'd gone over the emergency credit. How are you feeling generally at, at, at the moment, in all honesty? Um, I mean, there's, there's good days and bad days. I feel, I feel at the moment guilty and frustrated because it's his birthday on the weekend and I haven't been able to afford to get him anything. Um, I've only just covered the bills this month. Um, my mum has to do a food shop for me last week. Um, so I, I just don't feel good as a person. I just feel like I'm not doing enough, even though I probably actually am. Turning the tide. No, you, I mean, you, you're doing just enough. On destitution, said the charity behind today's report is an urgent moral mission. I don't feel like ain't nothing wrong with washing your clothes in the sink. Like, if I only got like one or two items, I'm not gonna, you know what I'm saying? If I didn't have a washer and dryer in my house, I'm not gonna go all the way to the laundromat or pay X amount of dollars. I, you know, I got dish soap. 
And I got these two hands, and I got water. I'm going to do it in the sink. I used to wash socks all the time in the sink. And, like, maybe a T-shirt or here and there. Like The circumstances that you find yourself in. But then again, like, I just didn't. I just It's not that I couldn't. I just didn't feel like. And they're, they literally can't is the difference. Would, in, in line with this report, um characterize you as destitute yes it's, it's not a word that i've ever used in my life never thought i'd have to use it but that's scary the thing that i i am destitute what's the hey siri uh-huh what is destitute Destitute refers to an individual or group that lacks the basic necessities of life, such as food, clothing, and shelter, due to extreme poverty. Okay. This answer is from definitions.net. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Because I was wondering why he wasn't just using, like, poor or, like, but that's not the case. He's just destitute. It's too, it's different a little bit. Even though I've tried not to be. Well, Channel 4 News did ask to speak to somebody from the government about this, but no one was available. Earlier, the Work and Pension Secretary, Mel Stride, was speaking to reporters and was asked about the report. So I think we have a strong record. Well, this is actually like a newscast, huh? On poverty. Since 2010, we have 1.7 fewer uh, people in absolute poverty. 400,000 of those are children. But there's always more to do, and that's why my department has been putting out millions of cost of living payments over the last year to 800 low-income families, exactly the ones you're describing uh, on universal credit, 6 million disabled people, also support for those who are pensioned as well, the national living wage going up by 9.7% uh, in April. But most importantly of all, continuing to bear down on inflation, because that is... It's just waffling, all of this is cap. Every time I hear like a, like a somebody in... A position of his, I don't believe you. It's really what's been eating up people's savings and making the cost of living that much more difficult. Well, I'm joined now by Katie Schmucker from the Joseph Roundry Foundation and by Bex Wilson, who set up a charity here in Leeds, helping to support some of those children in greatest needs. Thanks, both of you, for joining us. Bex Wilson, I mean, we saw Andy ask Paul in the piece. Paul, a grown man, he had been in work. Would you say you've been hungry? And he stands there and says, I've been starving. Does anything in that report surprise you, given what you've seen? It's still shocking to hear, um, especially towards the end, sort of saying, I never thought I'd have to use those words to describe myself. I think that's something we see a lot in our work, families that just never envisaged having to access the support that we offer. Um, but, you know, 2017, teaching a little boy, saying that he, you know, just didn't have a bed, um, and then not being able to, to find him a bed without sort of going out and, and doing something about it. Um, I was shocked then and I'm, I'm still shocked now and I think that's part of our mission to end bed poverty um, through I mean, Sarah. not having a bed, not having the basics, yet many people don't buy the idea of destitution. It's real and it's everywhere. And I would say from the messages that we get from schools, from professionals working on the front line with children day in, day out, it is only on the income. I'm not gonna lie, my child will never feel that. Like, I might be going through it, but I won't let it touch you. As my child, you gonna eat and I'll go, I'll starve. <laughs> Grace. I mean, Katie Schmuck, it's fair to say probably that the government don't actually buy your measure of, uh, of destitution. They've told us that there are 1.7 million fewer people in absolute poverty. We heard Mel Stride list a whole raft of policies, cost of living payments, increase... I told you Mel was capping. ...into the national living wage. He says that we're trying to tackle inflation and that will make all of these people better off, will it? Well, I think the, the questions that he's answering there are, are, are different ones. I mean, he's talking about absolute poverty. A, a single person in absolute poverty, if they have less than £157 per week, what we're talking about here is a far more severe form of hardship. Destitution, a single person who has less than £95 per week. We're talking about people who are unable to meet their most basic physical needs to be warm, dry, clean and fed. This is 
the most severe form of um, hardship and deprivation in our country, and it has doubled in the space of five years. And so that is what we want to... I feel like this is, oh, it's only going to get worse unless it's really fixed, and I don't know the solution, but all I'm going to say is y'all better fix it, man, for the people get to speaking and get to doing other stuff to combat these issues, an uprising type situation. To see the government. I don't condone it, but hey, listen. I'm talking about that very sharpest end of hardship, and we want to know, both from the government, but also from the opposition parties as well, what is it that they are going to do about this? Where is I mean, the government says it focuses on tackling okay. inflation, and it will ease some of these well, burdens for people. When we look at the, um, what's happened over time, we've seen between 2017 and 2019, destitution was rising in that period as well. It's risen again since. So, yes, definitely the cost of living, the very sharp increases to food and to energy has played a part here. But actually, the roots of this are much deeper, and they go down. They go to the. I feel like after COVID, man, like the government got really, really greedy. Like, oh man, we helped everybody out. We helped everybody ease that. But now, let's come back with a vengeance. Very threadbare social security system that we now have. The cuts and freezes to universal credit to social security. That is a big driver of what we are seeing here. I mean, there seems to be a disconnect often between what the government says and what people are seeing on the ground, what we see on the ground when we report on these issues. Of course, I mean, do you see that disconnect? Absolutely. We've been um, petitioning for a while now to have a response from central government about what, what are we going to do to ta Hear me out. tackle bed poverty. We know it's an issue affecting hundreds of thousands of children. Their one shot at education is being limited there attempt to get out of poverty through education is being limited through not having a bed, not turning up to school with their basic needs met, ready to learn. So what, what are we going to do to tackle that? We believe that there's a, 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 a thirst out there from the, the bed industry to do something and to, to, to help, but that needs to be coordinated from the top. I mean, your report uh, today talks about how, you know, social security needs to be more generous. You know that's an incredibly controversial political idea that neither party may be looking at. But I don't think it is that controversial an idea. When we talk to the public, when we do opinion polling, when we go out and speak to people, what we find is that people very much support the idea that our social security system should be there for us when we fall on hard times. Any, you know, life can come at you fast sometimes. Any one of us can lose our jobs, can be sick, get sick, need to care for a disabled family member. You know, things happen in life. And when they do, social security should be there to help us get back on our feet, and move on with our lives and right. our system is currently failing. But, I mean that. the government's stated aim of universal credit is that it will provide a basic income for people which covers a range of needs. Do both of you, either of you think that is true? No, I mean seven in ten people Clearly who are not. experiencing destitution were in receipt of social security payments, so universal credit or other benefits. It's clearly not actually helping people to meet their needs and that's why we've been arguing for an essentials guarantee to be built into uh -huh. universal credit. So that it is all yeah, so you can at least get the, the bases on top of what you're getting. Ways enough for people to meet life's basic essentials. But do you think that, you know, it's that idea of what is enough and that the government with the benefit system may have an idea of what is enough, but this destitution report suggests that's not right? Well, it's never... Our social security system, the basic rate of social security, of universal credit, is £85 per week to cover food, utility bills, clothes, travel, you know, all sorts of things, that yeah, it's clearly not enough. And it has never, never actually been related to a basket, a costed basket of essentials. It's just a sort of historical accident and a series of decisions about how to operate it. So it's completely disconnected from the realities of what it costs to meet your, meet your needs. And through my experience as a deputy head teacher of a large primary school and also working with, with professionals working in schools across the country um, through ZARAC, parents are not choosing for their children to not have a bed. They are not choosing for the chaos that is in their house when there can be no bedtime routine, where they are worrying about how to put food on the table, where they are, li they are living in houses without carpets, without um, curtains, and not knowing when they're going to be able to wash their clothes next or, you know, have their be top up for electricity and, and their utility bills paid. They're not choosing 
to live with that that pressure, that stress and that chaos, that's what they find themselves in. But it's such an important point though because the, the choice here lies with government. Government can choose to do something about this. Going to have to this. end it there and I'm really sorry there's so much more to talk about but thank you both of you for coming. Do you really think the government has like the, 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 the power to just be like, oh okay, yeah. And if they do, what's stopping them? Let me know in the comments what you really think, man. Because this is a huge problem and all around the world anyway. I'm gone.